Hey church, I am so excited that we get to go on an incredible journey together in the month of May for 28 days, for four weeks, gone through four chapters of an amazing book, the book of Colossians. It is a remarkable piece of literature, God-breathed literature, and Paul writes this letter to a group of Christians at Colossae that he didn't actually plant a church at. He didn't do this. It was through Epaphras that he met in prison that this letter is written. And um, Paul is writing this, scholars say, around about 53, 54, 55 AD, give or take. And he's writing this letter to encourage Christians, but also um, to correct them a little bit with some cultural challenges that this particular church was faced with. One of those challenges was Gnosticism. And Gnosticism has to do with the denial of Christ Jesus as being divine or being a deity. You can see Paul addressed this very strongly throughout his letter to the Colossians. Chapter 1 is an example where we see the preeminence of Christ Jesus, the radiance of Christ Jesus, the brilliance of Christ Jesus, that Christ Jesus sits above it all, that He is the firstborn amongst all of creation, the firstborn of all creation. That's a reference from the Old Testament. And uh, that He is enough. He is above any ruler or authority or principality or power. So pay attention as you go through the book to see Paul paint this picture of how amazing Jesus is. He also addresses, we can see this in chapter 2, he addresses another challenge called asceticism, which is to do with self-denial and going against any indulgences as a means to try and win God's approval. We already have God's approval through the perfected, completed, brilliant work of Jesus. And so denying ourselves through whatever means is not really going to get God to love you anymore. And Paul addresses this really clearly. As we go through the four chapters, however, there are four questions I want to submit to us all. As we ask for God's help, we need His Spirit to direct us and reveal Christ to us. We need Him. We can't do it without Him. We need God's Spirit. Four questions that we can ask. In fact, we can ask this when we read the Bible, any book, any chapter. First question is this. What is what I'm reading now? Lord, help me see. What does this tell me about you, God? About who He is, about His character, about His intentions for the world, for humanity. Second question is, what does this reveal to me about people or community? Whether it be about this specific group of people or the broader group of people. It's easy, we might want to individualize and think that this is personally just about me, but it's not. We make up part of a bigger plurality of persons. And there are things, while whilst God addresses this to a group of Christians a couple of thousand years ago, there are certain things that we can certainly learn for ourselves today. Third question is, how does what I just read about or what I just learned help me relate to God better? Do I need to have a heart response to it? Is it repentance perhaps, attitudes of the heart? Or maybe it's gratitude, maybe it's worship that we're led to relate to God in a different way. The final question would be, how has what I've been read helped me relate to people? Again, issues of the heart, forgiveness, resentment, love. How does what I've read affect how I relate to others? I would encourage the church as we go through on this journey together, let's not waste any day, any moment, a few verses every day, and let's sit on the word, let's chew on it. But importantly, let's not leave Jesus out of it because this all points to Jesus. And it's only his spirit that helps us see and savor him and his goodness. So as we come before the Lord in humility and thankfulness, let's have our Bibles open and let's pray together and ask him to reveal Christ to us that we might live lives for his glory. Can we pray? Father, thank you that we get to do this. We get to, as a community, enjoy you, hear from you, grow in you and glorify you. And we ask in all of this, you are honored and worshipped. We thank you in 
Jesus' name.